So far in our previous lessons, we have learned the various principles which are required for counting. Uh, we have also seen the few of the examples or the kind of problems which we face in the counting. These problems are namely the arrangement problems where the repetition is allowed, repetition is not allowed. <coughs> Uh, we have used the multiplication principles for that. Then we have the combination problems where the ordering is not important, right? Now let's look at the one of the most uh, uh, complex problems which we can face in the counting is called the distribution problem, right? So for the sake of clarity, we will always say in in this series that there are <coughs> there are balls which needs to be distributed in k urns. Urns are nothing but the boxes. Okay. So we have n balls and it needs to be distributed in the k urns. So there are various kind of problems which could arrive here. So let's try to you know mark them. The balls here could be identical or the balls could be all distinct, right? So let's have uh, the first thing we mark it as the balls are all identical and the balls are distinct, right? Similarly, the urns or the boxes in which the balls needs to go could be identical and <coughs> or <coughs> it could be distinct. So the urns could be identical and urns could be distinct. You can easily see that from this uh, these four conditions we can create four kind of a problem. So which would be balls identical, comma urns identical. Then we have balls distinct, urns identical. Then we have urns. Uh, sorry, the balls again identical and urns distinct. And similarly, finally we will have balls identical and sorry balls distinct and urns distinct right so there are four, four kind of problem which could arise from here so we will just write that in a tabular form in the number of checks you know base of distribution right. distribution so we write it as this tabular form so here we have four ones the balls are identical B I U I as we have done and B D U D similarly B D U I and then we have B I U T. So these are the four kind of problems which we can have. Similarly from the function we have known that there are four ways a mapping can be done from A to B. So when we distribute a ball to a particular urn, there is a single mapping, right? Is the mapping ball, there is a mapping between ball and urns. So let's try to divide the problem, those problems in four different ways. So the first one is, so F is from, uh, let's say, balls to urns, right? So these are the set of balls and these are the set of urns, right? Now we can have like, there is no restriction between this mapping. So we call that as NR, which is no restriction. Then we have learned that the function could be one to one, one to one. So meaning by these are the your balls and these are your urns. That for for every ball here there is a urn, right? And that needs to be unique, right? But there is a possibility that there are more urns there, right? So this can be said that no more than one ball in each urn, right? So we can say that since uh, you know every ball should have a unique urn, so it uh, it should not have more than one ball in each urn. But there are possibility that the urn has zero balls, so there is no mapping for this particular urn, right? Now let's try to look at the third uh, kind of a function which is called onto function onto function 
and we also call it as a surjective function. So what is an onto function? So these are again your balls and these are your urns. It simply says for every urn there must be a ball, right? So we, let's say this urn is mapped to this ball, you know, this ball is also mapped to this urn. This is mapped to this and this is mapped to this and you know there is there is another ball which is not mapped to anywhere but for every urn there is a ball right because you know so we can say that no urn is empty so no urn or uh, no urn is empty right and the fourth one is obviously is the bijection which we have learned as a principle so it clearly says that all the balls in various urns are mapped to it. it there is a unique you know, ball which is to the urn and all the urns have a singular ball. So, uh, you know, there are, each urn will contain exactly one ball. So, which will, this we call as exactly one ball, one ball in each urn. Right? So here we also find that there are four kinds of a problem and earlier we have seen that there are four ways the balls and urns can be divided. So henceforth we finally reach to a conclusion that there could be 16 different kind of problems. So here we uh, write the combination of uh, balls plus urn right and here we write no restriction. Right. So then we have exactly one one ball, exactly one ball in each urn. Then uh, we have the injective one, which says no more than one ball in each urn. So we represent with a short form for you know easier purpose. No more than one ball no r n and b we write it like that and then we say no ball no arm is empty we just try to write it as no arm is empty and so we are we are now with this let's try to form the different kind of distribution problems which we will see and we will try to find the solution for almost everyone and see that all the most of the counting problems are if there are distribution problems will be like this right so we have one two three and four and we have this one two three four right so this will be the balls are identical bi and urns are identical this will be balls are identical Urns are distinct, then balls are distinct and urns are identical. So we have drawn the fifth part as well, right? So we don't need that. We can simply remove this. Right. And we need to redraw that. Yes. So we are we are now with the four to four tables and these are 16 kind of problems and then finally the balls are identical and also uh, balls are distinct and also are also distinct. So we, we need to find the solution to all these kind of a problems. So I try to go one by one into each of the problems and if necessary I will try to give you certain examples. Please note all of these tickets uh, mainly four to five are four to five are important are and uh, the most of the questions which you will get into your competitive exams we really are from that part but we will you know for you know complete deep diving completely into the type of distribution problems we will try to find the solution to all these kind of problems right so in the next session i will start with a few of this kind of problem uh, if you want to see more videos like this do subscribe to our channel and as well as visit our website which is called deepdivemaths.com. Thank you.